Hello everybody, welcome to the shed on this hot, muggy Labor Day weekend. California weather up where we live is usually kind of dry, not that much humidity, but when the humidity kicks in and it gets up over 100, it's kind of like, I can pretend I'm in Mississippi, but there's no juke joint to go to down here, so that's probably just as well. Hey, what a cool shirt, huh? Nakona. This is like a cool shirt, cool band. I am going to give you a link to their site below so you can get one of these shirts and listen to their music. Been friends with them for a long, long time. Anyway, we've been working on this Florentine single cutaway hollow body arch top. It's a kit body. Um, you've seen us do these before. Um, but this one is kind of strange because we're making it look like an old beat up, wore out guitar that's been around the block. Like that donkey braying in the background. Hey, donkey! Um, we stain this with eucalyptus kino, which is like bleeding out red sap. Anyway, we've done some episodes about odd guitar finishes. I'm going to give you a link to that episode list up there. We had Mississippi Clay Dirt we did a guitar with. We did uh, California Oak Galls and did a bl black, deep black uh, guitar finish. And now this one out of the Eucalyptus Kino. So, I've been working on this one for a couple of days. Let's get to the bench. I'm going to show you what I've done at the bench. Uh, for the last a couple of days to get this one where it's at. Now, if you need to know how to make this stuff, um, I'm going to give you a link to that right up there right about now. Wait till the end to click that I and catch up on those uh, episodes because you don't want to miss what's happening in the footage I'm going to show you right now. Let's go. All right, guys. We are at the before part. When you see this turned to after, we'll be in a lot better shape. But you can see that the bench is full already. And um, the first thing that, that I'm trying to do here is we're actually trying to get everything on this guitar ready um, for finish, which is again going to be this eucalyptus kino here. Uh, but that involves a lot of things. It involves a lot of things like pre-fitting and um, for starters, this headstock came in in a form we call the paddle, so it's not cut out. I am going to take and do what uh, John D'Angelico was doing in about 1932 and trace out something. This time it won't be a Gibson L5, I wish, but we're going to be doing what everybody else does. We're going to trace out a headstock or pegboard, if you want to call it. Uh, this is a Harmony Monterey. I'm going to use uh, this shape and we're going to alter it just a tad, but I need to transfer that with a pencil and um, put it on this paddle and cut it out at the jigsaw and do a little rough sanding to begin with to get it kind of where we want it to be and I'll see you in a minute. All right, we are done with the belt sander and we roughed this out. Now, once that's done, we can put our form back on and pick a spot to line it up, which I've done. And then we can take our carpenter pencil. Uh, I use this to set nut heights and that kind of thing. I've ground half of it off and then we just come along where the paper is sticking out like that. Now. When it comes to the shape on the inside, we just kind of look at it like so and say, okay, this over here, there's a tad that needs to come off here and we can do that like that. And there appears to be just a little bit more paper sticking out there than there. So I'm just going to take this and put my finger like this and use it as an edge, kind of like you're marking something off to do something with a cutting torch. And then We'll make sure that everything lines up that way, but this is good enough for right now. So the goal here now is to kind of get everything to fit so we can um, start off first off. The best thing to do is if you look down in these holes, there are some burrs and some rough spots. 
which we might be able to use a scraper, especially if the binding is sticking out a little bit too much here. We can use a scraper. We can use a violin knife. These things are really handy. You float them on an edge and use them like a scraper and see how it's taken off those little curls of fine material. You don't want to use a drill to clean up the holes. You want to use a reamer and if you look down in here there's a few little blowouts on the inside so you just do this and make sure all your stuff is okay don't forget the input jack hole everywhere and that kind of thing you want to remember these things are made in factories so they tend to have some blowout here and there but overall the guitar kit world gives you a pretty good product Okay, so the end game here is we want to get this finish to be as smooth as possible because when we start putting on this shellac, the shellac is going to be transparent to some extent and where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer. And so things like these little pitch pockets where twigs show up or there's some little blemish in the xylem of the tree show up and those will show up also if I have a bunch of fingerprints and oils and solvents on here that's all going to show up so what I need to do is get this sanded down and what I like to do is get it sanded where I can run 12 or 1500 grit paper I want you to check this out I have awesome portfolio of paper take the time to do this I've got every grit 220 all the way up to there's 1500 okay I can do um, 1200 and I've got it cut in sheets uh, like so and I can just 1200 I can just cut off what I need this is one of those times you know how messy shops get this is one of those times you can tear off what you need if it will tear and then you put it right back in the 1200 slot this is something that's very cool and an organizational guru taught me about this if I can just get it to close now that means I turn this lefty loosey ready tidy okay and then I just put this away but the idea is that I'm going to end up using 1200 grit paper and going over this now I want to pay attention to the grain the grain is running this way so I'm just going to do this and you see that it's already taken everything without any hang up there's a little bit around these curves now when you're sanding with something flat and you get to an arch top it's pretty handy to have some of these sponges now these sponges come in uh, I can get them all the way up to 3000 a uh, grit and I can wet them and I can go over anything and it and it adapts to the arch shape pretty well so between this and this I'm just going to go over the whole guitar now top sides back I use when I'm applying and cleaning things off I use wipe all rags w-y-p-a-l-l -L. this is an 80 80 model and it's lintless and it's made out of paper and this stuff has pretty much replaced shop rags because it's lintless and if I can take a shop uh, one of these wipe all rags over it and nothing hangs up that's my measure because I'm actually you see that the dust is showing up there if I wipe this down with a wipe all rag and it comes up clean and nothing hangs up it's ready for finish once I get closer and all the sanding done I'm going to put uh, gloves on because again your fingerprints oils from your hand anything around that drops on it will show up in your finish so wipe all rags is what I'm going to use to put on the base two coats of the shellac and I'm just basically going to put the rag in there a clean one of course 
and wet the edge and go with the grain of the guitar so it will be like this now when you're working on the neck and stuff you're going to want to make sure that you don't break this this is a very fragile fragile thing to work with also the neck we're going to do the same thing we are going to make sure that it sands down to 1200 grit when we run across the corners and rounds we can do this um, with our sponges now, i want to show you while we're here stuff is starting to pile up this is why workspaces get cluttered you got too much stuff going on at once uh, but this does not want to fit down in here just perfect yet something hangs up so i've taken my pencil and i've put a coat of graphite on it you could do this with chalk you could do it any number of things just remember anything that you use around here can come up to haunt you later once your sanding is done and i am going to work to fit this neck perfectly now these neck these necks are very strong again this part is weak but they taper and so you don't want to put this neck in down here and then slide it forward you want to be right over the top and this needs to fit really well on this neck i've got a little bit of work to do right there right there and a little bit here and then i'm going to round these corners off and it will drop right in once i get all that done i'm ready to start putting some finish on this thing at least the base coat so there's quite a bit of sanding to do uh, you want to check your binding all of that thing and of course i'm going to get this neck where it needs to be okay i want to show you something a little technique here i have this rasp it has a fairly coarse side and a side here but this wood is fairly hard so it doesn't take a whole lot off so i'm going and starting with this here and then of course i'll use a coarser sandpaper to round this corner off and one of the problems is how this was rounded off in comparison to the shape of the body but there are a couple of wooden tabs right here that are kind of in the way and rather than try and scrape them off this way or where you don't have room to get a scraper in like this they have these things called violin makers knives and you can get them right or left handed you just sharpen them they're pretty easy to sharpen on the right piece of sandpaper on a piece of net cut off like this you just go along like this and and do that it's sharpened up every once in a while but the left and right handed ones or sided ones are good because you can just put them on a piece of wood like this and use it as a guide and you can see that there is that piece of wood sticking up there and i can just come in and make short work of that as well as the one up here like so so i just come along and keep it flat to the work and slide it back and forth or i can just cut it down this way and this way and it allows you to do some pretty precise work that even a chisel wouldn't be good with right there okay there we go and then you can turn it on its side like so and use it as a scraper and take those high spots down to flush pretty easy now you can also see that there's some something or other going on here that didn't turn out just right so i could try to fit a scraper in here or i could just take the violin maker's knife to have this lined up here yeah and put this on a piece of wood and then just pull this back and you see it will pull off and make what i need to be nice and smooth like that then i can take this and ride the edge and get any rough spots out like so
Okay, guys, I am going to uh, teach you a life lesson here. You ever have those moments in life where you go, there was that one moment that if I could do something completely different, I would have. Or you go, you know what, there was that one second where something happened and it changed the course of destiny. You know what I'm talking about? Alrighty then. So here's one of these moments that's not good. This has a rollomatic bridge that sits on studs. Rollomatic bridges are awesome unless you like to pull up under the string and pluck them and then it pulls off. But this rollomatic bridge allows for fine adjustment on the intonation uh, when you're setting up your guitar, the scales, right, everything's right. And um, if you need to move each string back and forth just a little bit to get the intonation right, that's good. But these fit in here uh, just like this. And these don't want to drop in. So I got an idea. Let's use this mallet because it's soft and I can just beat these in here. Of course, you don't want to do that. Um, and if that's not good, a smaller one won't work either. Now, I can get a drill out and go to town on this. That's not the best thing to do. So they have these things called reamers. They look like this, like so. And they're tapered. And you just turn this like this, nice and easy. Now, some of these are long. Some of them are a little bit shorter. But... You just turn it like that until that drops down in there. I got a little bit more to go. Another news flash on these guitars, there's a grounding wire that comes up through one of the, uh, the base stud holes. This is a lefty, so it's over here. You want to make sure that when you're all done doing your reaming, that that hole is open and has a wire in it that feeds the inside. But as we go here, you're going to see that this tool, in addition to doing this kind of work, is good for getting the burring out of there. Got a little bit more to go. I'll catch up with you when it's done. All right, there we go. Reamer done such a good job, you'd think... Texas Reamer did the job. Yeah, don't ask. So just remember, if we were to beat these in, we would have cracked something. Uh, this way, we can get our finish in here, down in here, so you won't have something odd looking in case you ever do need to adjust these up. Um, they rotate up out of here, you see that? And we didn't mash these down or anything. So in the event you have to uh, put these up. There is a little lip over here that hides the edge, but I still like to make sure that that's finished anyway. They sit here like this. Remember, this is backwards, and three of these come further back and three come forward. It's a matter of how you like to put which way you want to put the screws on. It's kind of difficult if you put the screws right in front of the pickup. That's going to be hard to do. So in this case, I would want to set the adjustment screws to the back and that way you only have to deal with the trapeze tailpiece but there you go okay the moment of truth has come we're going to start off on the back that's the part that's going to be the least visible and we're going to take a wipe all and we're going to go over this the last time notice that i have gloves on now we want to do that till everything disappears. And I've got a couple more wipe all rags over here that I have cut down and folded up that I can use like so. Now I want to make sure that my shellac is stable, that it's not going to be somewhere where I'm going to tip it over. Okay. And what's really cool is you got this cap here and you can pour some shellac in it. And you can put that right where you can get to it, like so, in a nice flat spot. 
can we see down there? Yeah. And then we just t take our rag, our wipe all rag like this, and we're just going to come down like this. And we're going to try to get it on evenly and without stopping too much and without a bunch of overlap. Now you want to remember, while you're putting this on, there are some drop downs because this is an arched back as well. So once you've got that first coat on, you can go around to some of the drop downs and where the curves are and things and, and get those filled in. But while you're doing this, you want to remember this stuff gets sticky and so you want to move fairly quickly and make sure this even. This would be harder to do with a brush, believe it or not. But we're going to do several base coats like this over the whole guitar. And we're not going to do the French polish finish until we get closer to being done. But this is going to darken up and give us a nice color. Now I can feel it getting sticky and pulling on the rag. When that starts happening, you don't want to stop in the middle because it will pick up the rag. And that technique is going to become really important later. All right, let's let this dry. And because there's Everclear in it, it'll vaporize off and it'll get harder. And then we'll just revisit it a few more times with the base coat. All right, there we go. The back is going to dry up. Um, I think it turned out pretty nice. Again, we're going to use our French polish applicator that we saw in another episode that um, I'm going to give you a link to right up there, right about now. Uh, but you remember this. It had the wool sock and the linen and all that stuff. And then we just put a little bit of Everclear on it. And we go around once we get our base coats on and just go around in circles, never ending circles and infinity. Of course, we don't want to stop. Sometimes if it starts to get a little sticky, you're going to put a dot of olive oil on there to keep things going so it doesn't get sticky. But the base coat is on and you can see the difference between the stock color and this color. I'm liking this a lot. It's going to go along well with the junk we're going to put on this guitar. So I'll do the rest of it and we'll close the episode out with a look at what everything looks like with the base coat on. All right, guys, here we go. Wipe all rag up on top. It's a moment of truth. We've got some clean ones. We're going to rag on the eucalyptus kino mix. We're going to pour out of this little flat dish here. It's hot out, so this stuff is going to want to harden up quick. Let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Here we go. Now we're going to put this on lightly the first couple coats because we don't want it hardening up and getting all weird. But look at it bringing out the color of that wood. Give you after here in a second. Now, after you get going here, you don't want to let your rag get all soppy and weird. 
when you're starting to do these little areas because this is where you start making some mistakes that art starts oozing there one thing i want to show you is we reamed out those holes so i want to come around to these wherever these holes are and get a stain in there and then we'll do this but yeah you want to be careful around the edges where it's arched because this is where you get big globs of the stuff on there and you don't want to do that but this stain is picking up everything real nice here You also want to make sure that you don't get it sopping down the sides. Again, if your rag has a lot of excess in it, that's going to be bad. You can feel it start to stick up back here. All right, almost done with the first coat. I don't want it sopping down the side up here. We're getting all over the binding nothing on too dark but there we go that's the first coat there we go sides are the same way just nice and easy pick up the wet edge when you can like this we can always put more coats on but once we get where we're putting it on too thick especially in this hot weather we end up with a couple spots in a mess that we can never get rid of or we're sanding and trying to sand something out. Some of the worst problems I've seen is when you're letting your varnish drip down the sides when you're not paying attention to doing the bottom or the top. Sometimes you get to thinking that the more exposed areas are more important so you pay attention to them get a little too much going on your rag and then the next thing you've got some big glob now you can see it's building up on the binding a little bit that's okay we'll use a scraper to get that off of there um, yeah, you really don't want to leave one of these guitars in a hot shed because one of the first things that will happen is your binding will start to come loose and separate from the body There we go, we're going to let this dry a little bit so we can do the other side. All right, when you start getting the second and third coats on the back part here, 
it starts looking a lot darker and then and these little spots there's a light piece there there's a little I don't know whether that was a thumbprint or what but you can fix these little spots later with the French polish technique that we were using there and we'll resurrect that when it's time but yeah nice and easy is the best way here all right guys there we go that rag worked out pretty good in this little flat I think it's a package from sandwich meat anyway it's starting to come around you just need to be patient get a couple more coats on it and then towards the end we'll do the French polish once we start thinking about getting our hardware on I think I like the way this turned out what do y'all think all right what do you think looking good I got some more work to do but yeah this guitar is a lefty and it's for Tammy this is going right to Tammy as soon as it's done covet it all you want but she's been playing upside down six string arch tops for way too long so this one's for Tammy so hey if you like this give me a like and subscribe make a few comments below I'd like to hear your suggestions on other odd stuff that I could use that's legal well in most places anyway to make guitar finish and I might try it out so hey again don't forget about my friends in the band Nakona is this not the most beautiful t-shirt ever you got some dude beating off whoever's supposed to be this with, with a guitar you can't beat this this is awesome this is a showstopper see the show just stopped anyway give me a like and subscribe and I will see you next time